Hello. Hello. We are back. Hello. 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 So this week we are going to be discussing the film score for Tenet. And there will be few, as few as possible spoilers because I haven't seen the film yet, although I've listened to the album. Uh, I think pretty much everyone else, except for maybe Ale, has seen the film. So it's it should be spoiler free for anyone in the chat. Have you not seen uh, it, Ale? I thought you had. No, I haven't. Let's, let's try to <sighs> right. keep the chat spoiler free as well. <laughs> spoiler free. It's tricky. Right. Should we start by listening to something? Sure. Let's kick it yeah. off with a with a track. What do we want to yeah. listen to? Or maybe uh, just some quick context that this is um, the first sort of major Chris Nolan film that doesn't have a Hans Zimmer score. Yeah. And so it was a refreshing take to get something different. Um, and I, I think what he did with it is, um, is great. And, you know, I mean, that's what we'll be getting into today, but I think it's, it's really quite kind of innovative in, a, in um, its approach to sound. I mean, we can debate that uh, in various things, but I think it was just nice to have something that's a bit kind of different to the machine that's been going. Cool. We'll, we'll talk about this, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> so right, clearly so... some differences of opinions. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 not necessarily what I'm saying, but we'll get into What's it. What's a good one so we can get an uh, idea? I'll just play like a minute Freeport. or two. Okay. Free yeah, yeah, I think free yeah, free as well. is definitely. Can someone make a hand like... signal when we've had enough. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
Cool. 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 Who wants to go first? Mike. I'll fall <laughs> upon you. Can I actually, guys, why, no, why don't we... No, why don't we let the synth expert of the group uh, who hasn't watched the film, but I'm really interested in knowing what he thinks of, of this. Well, as the synth expert of the Well, group. oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, clearly you mean Ali. Go ahead, Ali. Yeah, I, I, I meant Ali, obviously. First of all, I'm not mm, that expert at, at synths. I mean, I, I just started a couple of years ago, but um, I, this is my favorite one, first of all. It's my my favorite track. I love the fact that <clears throat> I'm a um, theme guy. I love themes, main themes. And uh, at first, when I when I lis listened to the soundtrack for the first time, um, the fact that um, he didn't have a an I easily identifiable main theme um, quite annoyed me um, because I was thinking of the Mandalorian and all the cool things. Um, he could do in um, like coming up with a weird theme and uh, I couldn't hear one in, uh, in, in this soundtrack here, but uh, I think the, the, the closest thing to, to a theme and I love it in this sound soundtrack is this uh, and uh, the, I think it's recurring in, um, in, uh, so some cues uh, correct me if I'm wrong because no, I've definitely heard it in in other cues. Yeah, so it's uh, it's pretty cool. I I, I love it. Uh, it's um, when I listen to it for the first time, um, the the mix was uh, was weird. I mean, the it seemed pretty narrow uh, compared to um, other things that I've heard of his i don't know if it's the consensus here but it didn't it didn't feel like i i'm not saying it's it sounds mono of course uh, but i i would have preferred something more uh spaced maybe is that across the whole album you know that? yeah yeah i, I have to say i noticed that as well i don't think it necessarily was an overall width thing it just seemed like there were holes in sort of the spatial image of everything that made it feel like something was missing at least listening with headphones it's a lot easier to hear than listening on monitors but it definitely felt like it wasn't fully you know filled out yeah it seemed like he had a lot of effects like reverbs and delays going left and right um in the stereo field but not the, the the main sound, the source. Uh, like I, that might, might be a, a my impression of it. But it seemed like everything was coming from the front, and uh, the effects were were coming from left and right. But I don't know. If, uh, I'd overall, say that though, it it's oh, still everything's really clear. Yeah. Like uh, you know, every everything sort of sits in its place really well, and you know, I think everything kind of cuts through. It's it's super well balanced. Yeah, it sounds good. Uh, it, <laughs> if, if I, I think, I think he's done. I don't know. But the um, listening to the whole soundtrack and then the the last track, the Travis Scott's one, uh, which I guess um, Goran Sons produced, anyways. Uh, that one feel. That one feels. I don't know. Feels clearer and. Um, I don't know. That's the impression that I that I got from the I, whole thing. I it, wonder if it's a symptom of of the the busyness of the soundtrack on the film. That the, there had to be some some holes left in the music. Um, I don't know. Maybe. But I haven't seen the film. I'm just talking about like mm, sound wise. Mm, the the impression that gave me that uh, it's probably a choice of his. And I I overall I I like the soundtrack. It just seemed a bit. Mm, crammed. Mm. I had the same the same thought of of Sam that maybe it's because of like the how busy in general the um, the images then sorry the the, um, the sound is in this film like there are moments in which between soundtrack and and sound design so all the sound effects that are going yeah on. but the, they're gonna they're gonna mix they're gonna have a mix yeah. film and they're gonna have a mix for the soundtrack it, sh it shouldn't it shouldn't affect an album mix it's really <laughs> I wanted, Genzo, I, could you just turn yeah. your mic up a little bit you're just a bit quieter yes. sorry i'm just gonna say the... how is it now a bit better good you sound Wait, lovely can i sorry sam was i can i add one more thing or yeah, yeah go, go 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 
because I wanted to pick up on something that Alice said. I think that um, I agree with you. I was a little bit bothered uh, in the beginning by the lack of a clear uh, theme, like a, a main melody that would um, sort of brand the film, which I think uh, has always happened with Chris Nolan and Hans Zimmer's collaborations. Uh, even for like the Dark Knight, where the theme is super silly, it's just like two notes really, and an ostinato, arguably. But there was still a, a, a main idea which was very clear to me. And uh, for some reason, uh, I immediately noticed the the, the lack of a, a, a main melody in this film. But um, thinking about, and I'm gonna try to be as spoiler free as I can, um, just to give a, a little bit of a context to whoever is watching us. The film is. Uh, an action film. Basically, Nolan has said in multiple interviews that what he wanted to do with the film was to sort of give his own spin on a sort of James Bond film. Um, so it's a big action film. And what I felt watching the film is that um, sort of the character development is not as important as the action scenes and like the visual impact. And I think the music deliberately reflects this, as in the lack of a, of a main theme is, I think it's it's actually a, a very deliberate choice. And the music is really interesting and full of effects. And uh, there are a lot of mirrors uh, between like in parallel between the music and the images and what's going on with the plot. And uh, I think, you know, on, 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 one, on one side, it's cool that the music reflects how little character development there is, or at least in my opinion, in the film. And it's just all about the effect and the sort of how bombastic it, it, it looks and it sounds on from one side. But on the other side, um, I feel the fact that not even the music has uh, a main theme, a leitmotiv, kind of takes away a bit more from the film. I was not completely enthusiastic about the film. I liked it, but I wasn't like, ooh, super uh, excited. Well, I thought, I, and I think I mean, like... Sorry, just on that, I think that it's, yeah. um, I mean, kind of in the context of the film, it really doesn't need it. Like, I think the music serves the purpose of what's needed because there's so many, like, considering all the other elements of the story that are in there, um, it doesn't, you know, I don't think, I think it operates very well as a theme, like that a theme doesn't necessarily have to be melodic. Yeah, it's that's that's what I meant. Well, that's what I meant in the beginning. I, I, the first yeah. impression I had is like this is missing a, a main theme, but then I realized just in I don't know Terminator Two, the ta tan tan ta tan. Yeah, exactly. It's a it's a rhythmic main theme. There, there's a rhythmic wrong. idea. Yeah, sure. the signature of the yeah, film yeah. essentially. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I I would I'd agree. I I would say though that um, I agree with Vincenzo in that um, it. it I, I would say that it probably does need it. I think the we, this for me this is I, I really enjoyed the film, but it's certainly for me not one of Nolan's best because one thing he's so good at is making sure the drama holds its own in each film. And for me in this one, it it didn't. It was more about the spectacle, and I, I agree that the soundtrack reflects that. But actually, the argument could be made that it was his job to improve those aspects of the film and to make because it's not like it's without drama there's some really dramatic parts to this film but i never felt the weight of them perhaps as i might have done i don't want to say with a hands and a score because he's guilty of it as well but you know i think there are there are elements that needed a bit more musical help yeah the, um, the one issue i had with it was that it just seemed to maintain the same level the entire time much like dunkirk did but obviously in that context it was meant to be this sort of heightened level of anxiety for the entire film whereas this one um i mean there's a couple musical moments that are a lot quieter and a lot more subdued but for the most part it just after a while i found myself sort of ha having the music and i'm actually i'd prefer to almost call it sound design because that's sort of what it's functioning as um it sort of lost its any sort of emotive effect just because it was constantly going, going, going the entire time, unrelenting. Um, and perhaps, yeah, it could have been helped with a little bit more thematic material to help develop the emotional aspects, despite the lack of character development. But um, yeah, well, I I kind of disagree on that. In that, I I guess my feeling with this, and sort of bringing it back to just the track um, and and thinking just like the the composition of it. What I really love about this track and why it's probably my favorite track on the album. And um, it seems like the one that sticks out to everybody, uh, you know, that I've, I've heard the most about it 
it's constantly developing. You know, I mean, we just listened through the whole thing. And I think initially before we started, we thought, okay, we'll listen to, you know, a couple minutes or something and we'll sort of stop when we feel we need to. And I was thinking while we were listening back, you know, like, oh, but then there's this part and then there's this part coming up and it'd be nice to kind of include that. And I think that because it constantly evolves, um, you know, the, there's no section of it that really comes back and is exactly the same. Um, I think that's what he's doing really well within the craft of this. It's very subtle and very minimal, but like each time that rhythmic figure comes back, it's a bit different. And even though it's kind of using this like, um, you know, modular sound and then that, you know, what's sort of coming out of the, uh, the rhythmic idea ends up becoming the snare rhythm and it sort of is constantly evolving. So uh, that's something I loved a lot about this score that um, it seems kind of at face value like, oh, this is sort of electronic. But then as you kind of dig deeper and deeper, it has so much color to it. That's yeah. my takeaway. There is also, which reminded me, Mike, that the, there isn't an immediate melodic idea to latch onto but they're actually that track reminds me that there is there is actually a bit of like music da dee dum dee dum that that idea i think represents the protagonist i'm not sure if it's in that track but it is actually throughout it's just it's it in my opinion it's completely overwhelmed by everything else um i don't know if that's you know deliberate i'm sure it's a deliberate decision um but there is there is melodic content in there it's just with with many other composers that would be first and foremost that that is the thing you develop and i just don't think that's the thing he's developing which i think is what michael's saying about character development if that represents a character and isn't being developed that's a symptom of you know the film i think more than anything he's chosen to to, to latch on to other things should we ever listen to another track that's maybe a bit more orchestral, like kind of the other end of the spectrum on this album? What do you yeah. guys think? Algorithm. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was just going to say before we move on, I, I, I definitely feel the kind of pop sensibilities and background coming through um, in this, not necessarily in that track, but in this, in this soundtrack overall. Like there were some moments where I felt like in terms of musical development, there was a bit of statistics staticity like it was just in stasis like i could hear the same patterns the same synths the same sounds kind of just moving through chord changes in the way that like a pop backing band might do and uh that's something that you don't necessarily hear in a more conventional film score like they they usually develop the music internally uh it just felt at moments that it was like kind of playing time uh it, that was one thing that st stood out to me as a bit of a as a bit of a criticism but then, yeah, everything you guys were saying is also in there. I guess that's an action-y thing, though, isn't it? It's, it's, it's done in, di done differently, but in action films, it's very. I think that's very common to to have that kind of ostinato, you know, going on. Yeah, okay. I'm now. going to play the algorithm. Stop me when you want.
All right. Sorry, Mike. I had to mute you there. Yeah, I think so. we had a rope ding. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, well, so who wants to say? I mean, this kind of actually segues exactly to what I was talking about, which is the the pop music sensibility of the beginning, like that you know dotted idea where you're not sure of where the downbeat is of the next bar. That's like a a staple of of dance music that he's just playing on on the strings. And I um, think he does this in multiple tracks. Uh, actually, there's another one where he does the same thing, Shane. So it's like a rec it's a recurring element. I think. Yeah, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I think it actually is a really awesome idea. It works. Mm -hmm. yeah. It works great. But um, mm -hmm. it's just interesting to see the pop sensibilities informing those decisions. And what interestingly, aligned with aligned with what you were saying about the pop sensibilities, going back to what we were talking about of you know Mike was talking about things being developed. Um, I think the way that he's actually developing these things is not, you know, it's not a slow incline developing, you know, as, you know, traditional orchestral music is. It's really sort of like this, ramping up each time and you reach those pivotal moments and then suddenly a new motif is introduced or as new instruments are slapped on. And so in the traditional sense of musical development, I don't think it quite fits that. But in terms of ramping up the excitement every so often, adding these new ideas, maybe making it a little bit more complex, um, where was I going with this? Um, yeah, but that's a good point. Yeah. That is, but that I think is so basically like like pop music. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. what it was. But and the thing as well, just effective. I think just on that, that like, you know, we've we spent a quarter of an hour saying there's a lack of thematic material, but actually this is a moment where it uh, does shine through. And you know, the first section of the of the piece is the theme, dum dee dum dee dum, and then the latter part is a reprise of that where it's recorded and then uh, in reverse mm -hmm. um and then you know that that's really clever and that's a different way of developing the theme and it, it makes for this sort of really unsettling peculiar sound um yeah and it's it's this is probably my favorite track on the album i would say for those reasons because it because there is something melodic to latch onto. Well, um, I, just to clarify, I think you know maybe saying there's a lack of melodic thematic material. It's not. It's not a. When I say melodic, melodic it's not a negative. I mean, I, mean, I didn't yeah. mean it as a negative. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I don't necessarily either. I just mean that from a, for me, from a dramatic point of view, and I'm not talking about getting your heart pulsing. I'm getting it. It's a different thing. It's not like action music or pulsing music or thriller music that has different priorities. For me, the best way of um, drawing people into a, the drama of a scene or the struggles of a character is is through melodic writing or through um, something that has a little bit more um, harmonic content as well. You know, and and this one we can clearly hear that. Obviously, there, there's other tracks where, you know, there's there's interesting rhythms going on, and there's 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 subtly adapting sounds through that, but that's not going to make you, um, you know, think of the the long form change in a in a character or you know things like that. That's where leitmotif, as Vincenzo was saying, is is, a, is an important thing to deal with. I realize that doesn't always have to be melodic, but I think in this one it... The reason I'm just making that distinction is because I think there's a lot of different thematic ideas in that last track, and something like even just reversing a sound is a recurring thematic idea that's used throughout on a lot of different tracks for a lot of different instruments. And, uh, you know, so I, I think it is quite like nested. There's a lot of um, different kind of concepts and things that he's using over and over again that doesn't just recur like every time we're going to hear the strings reversed or every time we're going to hear this rhythmic thing on this modular sound. It's like those concepts are sort of separated and constantly used throughout different ideas. I, I appreciate that. I think what I'm saying is that for for example, the idea of reversing the sounds, um, to me, I mean, he, he does it very well, but it's a very clear and obvious thing to do um, for this film. And you don't associate it with anything other than the context of the film. Whereas there are there are people involved in this story, you know, that, I mean, I, I, I think it's fair to say as well that Christopher Nolan, um, this is all conscious decision. I mean, the, the main character doesn't have a name. He's just called the protagonist. And I think that's very deliberate and obviously that's deliberate, but the, the fact that his story isn't 
his his development isn't the focus of the film is a very deliberate decision i'm just yeah. saying that the there are other elements of the story there are there are things that musically could have been done differently um to show a kind of more of a character development i think that's what i that's all i was getting at and i think this track is the closest that it comes to that um and you know i just love what he does with it um, i think it, it's really interesting um yeah 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 um guys one thing that just came to to to, to mind uh, is one track that we didn't sort of say we didn't uh agree to, to to play earlier when we were chatting about what to play but possibly one of the tracks that made me feel more uneasy and uh, that, that that i think was more interesting was um what's it called blue room red room or red room blue room something like that yeah with the breathing yeah that is i think to me the most interesting track of the album just because of like the way uh, it uses sound design as an integral part of of the com the musical composition and it's just like um it it really really made me i was releasing into it today while i was on a tube going uh going around and it really made me feel so uncomfortable and uneasy uh that's what you want when riding the tube yeah exactly <laughs> especially th this time in history um I don't know if it's worth listening to a little bit of it, a little bit of it, but I think it's really relevant to to show like what this soundtrack, in my opinion, is really uh, innovative with and and really original, really um, stands out. Yeah. Shane, is it a problem to? I can. Do you want me to just play from the beginning? Uh, yeah. Also, I think we don't need to play it all because it's a long one and like the the most interesting. Oh, no, actually, yeah. it's not particularly long. But yeah, it's just well, like so the just, first the first half. Just give me a signal when you want me to stop. I just wanted to see yeah. if there was anything else we wanted to say about that last track because it was quite um quite a significant one. Beaky. Um, I was gonna say about the, I think it's a very cool conceptual idea with the reversing of the orchestra in the you know the second half of the track. I'm not sure mm -hmm. I really like the aesthetic. I'm not sure it really like came off to me in a in a satisfying way. To me, it mm. was like, I kind of saw Sam do a little smile there. I did a little smile as well, because I'm like, I think it's a cool idea, but just the the way it comes does across. Does it work? In, you, know, you know what, Shane? My smile doesn't work for me. My mm. smile was born from having seen the film. And the reason is that we can't say anything more without giving things away. Yeah. yeah. But it, okay. it, that, that specific idea, not, not just in the literal idea of what he's doing but the the feeling it gives you for me is exactly what the film gives you right although it, like, I will it say really that, emphasizes that i will say that i don't think it's necessarily important that that sort of reversal idea also factors into the storyline there because most of the people that will see this film will not understand that that is what's happening sonically they'll not understand that the yeah. violins have been reversed and so it's really only a way that he can maybe explore the story and find some interesting sound palettes because most people will not necessarily identify that those sounds are in well, fact reversed well but i think if you sorry sorry go on Vic. no i think we're about to say the same thing maybe because i think yeah people won't consciously think oh this is a reversed violin but i think if you listen to the to the whole soundtrack there's definitely i mean ev everybody has happened to hear a reversed audio file file of any type uh, somehow i think or it's, like, it, it's a sound that somehow has like is in the uh, Public General. consciousness. Yeah, think, public consciousness. So, yeah. And I think you, you just figure out what's going on. The, the soundtrack is full of reverse. I, I mean, maybe I'm, maybe I'm a pessimist in this way, but I think that, you know, maybe we're spoiled being, you know, learned musicians and that we're able to really identify when something is backwards or, or, or when something has been altered in a certain way. I mean, maybe you're right. You know, at the end of Inception, well, right when the I, little totem is spending, you, you've got yeah. that backwards piano sound. So maybe people do know it, but I don't think it's necessarily something in that moment that you would latch on. Yeah. That I think would we're used to hearing that. Enjoyment. We, everybody's used to hearing that and then you're hearing that. Yeah, and I think, and it, and I think everyone's gonna gonna notice that that's weird. So but they I don't know why, because there's so many interesting synth sounds already in this film that are so foreign to you know the the casual listeners. Would they really lock on to something that sounds different? Because now, if we were hearing a fully orchestral score, maybe it would be a lot more apparent to have the reversal of the violin sound. But seeing as we have all this synthetic um, sort of. Uh, excitement and and information going on in the background would people really lock on to that specific well, 
I think that's a clever fusion. And I think that the, the, the point isn't necessarily someone hearing it and thinking, oh, that's reversed. So it must have something to do with the film. I think they're going to, this is why I think it's important to think of the two together. It's written for the film. And it's about the feeling that the marriage of the two gives you. And I think that yeah. they suit each other. I think the, the comparison I would make is Hans Zimmer's score to Inception. Um, you know, I think it's fair to say that, that, that Nolan likes to play around with time and Inception is about the stretching of time in, the, in a dream state. And so Hans Zimmer sort of famously took Edith Piaf's um, song, Je ne gratte rien, I think, yeah. and, and, and stretched out the, the low brass Bob bomb, Bob bomb, yeah. Bob bomb. Although I think that's and a lot more apparent to the casual theater goer. I'm not I sure. It, I'm not sure it is. I'm not sure it is. Well, yeah, the, the, if, you, if you know the original song and you hear it slowed down, of course it's going to be obvious that time has been warped. Yeah, but you said it. If you know the original song, and no, well, there's, they, there's no guarantee of any of that. It's, it's just the feeling that it gives you in the moment in that film, where you know time is is stretching, and that we're going into that dream state. And I think that's just a really clever. Uh, uh, messing around with music to, to I mean it's almost it's almost a sound design thing to do that to put you in that space and I think it's just a very similar thing that he's doing here he's just messing around with time musically um and I mean I won't say it's like the obvious thing to do in this film but um I, I just think that you mentioned like with the combination with synths and everything I think that, that's fair enough but I think he does it in a in a in a clever way i think it oh yeah well i don't sense. think it's i'm not saying it's not clever i'm just saying that i don't think the overall intent was that the audience would feel the reversal from this reversal of sound yeah. it may be just a way of him marrying certain aspects of the story into his music a little bit more closely and tied in with the scene as essentially sort of a musical easter egg for any sort of discerning ear i mean but well i guess so just so because we've talked about how much like you know he's bringing in a lot of this sort of pop sensibility and a lot from a lot of like electronic produced music, it's probably actually more common for people to hear that and be familiar with that than like orchestral music. Well, yeah, they're, they're familiar with the sound, but do they know exactly what it is though? Um, that's, that's really what I'm, I'm trying to nail down is like, it doesn't matter if the sound is familiar or not, it's do they realize that it's a reversal of something? Yeah, but it doesn't matter if they really... Well, exactly. This is this is the point I'm trying to say is that I don't think the actual reversal is the thing that people are intending to lock onto. Mm, no, yeah, I, 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 I kind of think it is in the way that like it's it's a clear you know it's a it's a really sort of direct uh, allusion to the story and yeah, I no, think, no, yeah, but do you think sound, a sound a sound in reverse is an allusion to the story, not just specifically the first violins in in reverse. Yeah, that's what I think Michael means. Yeah, I guess the, I guess what one thing that I would maybe add to that is that you know it. <clears throat> he's he's done it in a way where but there's plenty of films like I'm thinking of like Harry Potter three, where they've like even John Williams used some reverse sounds to give the impression of you know messing with time. It's, I think I think people are pretty familiar with it. The the thing that's clever is that you hear the theme as we heard it at the beginning, but in reverse, and it sounds weird because all the attacks are in the wrong place, mm. and I think I think people will hear that and. It, they don't necessarily i think they would anyway personally know what that what they what exactly how he's done it but i don't think that's important i think it's the it's the backwards feeling it gives you listening to it in conjunction with the film because you're meant to feel completely unsettled by all of this um when you're watching and listening to it i think i just think that's that's the clever thing is that it is it, the, the thematic material has developed in this way, you know, in a way that is impossible to develop music in real time. Do you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's the thing that appeals to me is that he's in recorded medium. He's able to develop the music in that way. Um, I'm looking yeah. forward to when I do see the film, seeing this particular moment. If you say that it's a very crucial moment within the story. I think, I think it's one of many really is, it's one yeah. of many, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's plenty of examples. The only reason why I brought this up in the first place is just in the context of the film, I didn't particularly notice that bit. Um, and most <laughs> of the time, I'm completely locked into what's going on. And the thing is, we've all, I mean, listened to it tons of times after seeing it. So it may be sort of hindsight bias saying, you know, I've always, you know, realized in context that you feel the reversal, but it may just be repeat listens as well. Because in the first context, I mean, to be honest, the story itself, and maybe it's, it's a combination of, uh, it's a synergistic thing with it's the story, the cinematography, 
the music that all gives that effect. But I felt like the the visuals themselves really clearly demonstrated what needed to happen. Maybe the music just didn't disrupt that. Yeah, I, I mean, I'd agree. I'd, I'd say it's one of the most cleverly shot films that yeah. I've, I've seen. Like, Absolutely. Yeah. Can you imagine the, uh, the logistics? We can't talk about it. because not get into it. Play the track. Should we move on to the other track? Red yeah, and blue. Uh, here we go. wasn't sure this, we wanted to keep going yeah it's there there's more of this and then it gets a bit more exciting but like i was just this, imagining you sitting on the tube in panic you know man, i was like frigid. literally <laughs> i need to get out of this tube as soon as i can <laughs> it was like really un, it's it's really unsettling i think it's a brilliant track because like i mean it's it it uses um very uh i don't know how to say this like it's very simple in a way uh, there's not much going on, but the way that sound is manipulated and the way it uses non-musical elements, so like noises and, and samples to just create a, um, uh, a feeling, really. It's, 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 um, it's super interesting, I think. Like This kind of work that he did makes the soundtrack w completely worth uh, listening to the whole album, in my opinion, because it's, it's really... Um, it's really interesting. Like this. I just wanted to be um, polemic for a, for a second. Oh, uh, mm, I think it's a great soundtrack. Mm, I I like it, uh, to be honest. Uh, but I think it's innovative in a sense that we've never seen something like this in a blockbuster film. Mm -hmm. um, but I've seen this kind of stuff in a in many other films. Uh, I mean, I was thinking if it's, it's a different style, of course, but I was thinking of uh, Under the Skin. Uh, I, so that. I I have to be honest. If I think of something like sound designy um, and electronic, organic, hybrid, I I mean, Under the Skin is a million times more innovative, in my opinion. Uh, I'm not saying it's a better score, uh, and this one is a um, worse score. Uh, I just think that I we I think we give, um, I mean I I think we're saying that this is so innovative as if it's innovative in the general um, soundtrack world, but I think it's very innovative to have a, a blockbuster movie uh, with this kind of of uh, sound design and warped sounds, 
um, and electronic stuff. By stuff. all means, by all means, I didn't want to say that like nobody has ever done this because yeah. No, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. I, I, I agree with you. Well, I'm I, not I sure think... it even is to be honest. In blockbusters, um, that innovative. I mean, Mel Wesson's worked with Hans Zimmer mm-hmm. for, for donkeys years, and you know he put the bat flap in Batman. You know, yeah, the sound. Would... Of, yeah. It was like uh, sure. uh, like buried underneath uh, uh, yeah. 400 strings and uh, I don't know if it, it was a signature. It was a signature of the score. I mean, yeah, it's, no, 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 I know, even, I know. Even even like the Joker's suite or like the Joker's theme is just like a, a, a people scr- scratching on cellos with with pens and like all sorts of weird stuff. Uh, but still, I think th- there's there's a quality to this soundtrack specifically that is different from from that too. Uh, and to go back to what I was saying, I think it's um, there there's a, a simplicity to it that stands out in my opinion. There's like um, working with very like with few elements and manipulating them and and twisting them as much as possible. What's the minimal minimalistic nature of the score as well, right? Yeah. Just, you know, yeah. having simplistic ideas that add up over time to create a more complex overall image. I, I think Ale touches on a really interesting point with that, that, um, yes, I agree completely. It's it's um, looking at it in the, cont- the context of it being a Hollywood blockbuster. And from all of us who've worked on Hollywood blockbusters and, uh, have seen kind of what that machine looks like and that, you know, it's hard to, well, it's, it's easy to sit and judge a composer for what they've done without understanding all the different um, sort of business elements that they're kind of up against. And in a massive franchise, um, you know, you'll get a lot of kind of stops and people wanting things to be quite safe. Um, This is, you know, obviously not a franchise, but it's a massive, um, blockbuster film and it's it's great that he's able to combine a lot of these things in one score so that you're able to have all of these really unique and sort of proper electronic music coming into it along with some interesting ideas uh in orchestration and then bringing in some of these sound design elements and i think the fact that he could kind of get all of that into the final mix and get all of these different ideas is really an achievement uh, as a composer, because it would be really easy to take something and, you know, sort of play it safer, um, especially on something of this scale where in a lot of indie films, you get the freedom to go off and be a lot more artistic with something. Um, so I think that's, you know, quite cool and quite an achievement to be able to to have all of that. I think it's a testament to the way Christopher Nolan works as well, because he, from what I've read, he uh, did the same thing that he's done with Hans Zimmer on, on a lot of their films, their collaborations, which has got him in very, very early. I think he met with him. Uh, this is Ludwig Göransson now. He met with him um, just to sort of talk about music for like six hours, then said, do you want to come back and read this script? So he did in the dark room for five hours. And this was long before they filmed anything. And then they spent three months coming up with ideas for characters, for, for ideas in the film. And then he was writing all through that and all through the filming process as well. Apparently no one would email him from some random part of the world. Um, and that is very rare to, you know, on any level of film. It's sad that, that, that it's involved. very rare because that feels like it should be the ideal way of working, right? Because then you can really get into the DNA of the story that you're actually working on yeah it's because christopher nolan has you know achieved enough clout for himself that you know people trust him but if it's you know a director coming into a studio there's there's just so many you know moving parts like i get why it's hard to do you know that kind of collaboration or that it's rare because there's just people and and money and a lot of things at stake um so it's wonderful that he gets to kind of you know he's earned that clout and decided to kind of keep pushing and innovating i mean i think that's a testament to him as a director too for sure i think i think as well like it's yeah it's 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 that he's definitely got the the influence to make those calls but he also 
appreciates the importance of the soundtrack and and loves music and so he and he also allows the music to inform the shooting of the film as well which is rare as well i think i i'd agree to a point that the there's there's so many moving parts in a film that it's rarely possible to have that um, length of time in bo- uh, length of time. I, I would say personally that there's no reason why a composer can't start coming up with ideas before the film's been shot. If there's a script to work to, I think it makes total sense to do that and to have that collaboration start as early as possible. I don't see why not, but yeah. you know, it obviously and you're pay- well, quite well. The, the, yeah, that's but the at the same is. time, though, like uh, if you had some sort of package deal for the whole project, would it really matter budget wise? You know, because then you'd allocate your time as an individual to how you'd actually spend it. Yeah, I mean, not to, you know, kind of it's going down a different rabbit hole, but I think just depends on, you know, what it is. And if you can justify that kind of like we would all love to work that way, you know, uh, who wouldn't. But, you know, if if it's like literally peanuts you know, to do something, then, you know, you're, um, and, and depending on kind of what flexibility you get out of it, I think it requ- it comes from both ends. Like, you know, we'd all love to work that way. And, uh, but we'd love a collaborator who loves to work that way. And, you know, th- there's that sort of mutual respect. Um, so yeah. I mean, you know, I definitely push for more and more of it. You know, I think it only creates a much better product. For sure. Guys, do we want to listen to one last track? Because we're kind of getting to towards the end of our... Sure. I was just going to say on that one, um, I, I agree with what you said at the beginning, Chenzo, that it's it's interesting to hear just the quality of the individual sounds and like a few number of elements very exposed where you're just listening to almost one sound. Like the sound of the, like I think it's like a reversed bass guitar or something mm. at the beginning that's an incredible sound that has been crafted and polished and you're just hearing that on its own. And I think there's something to learn from that because it's very easy to just put 10,000 things on top of one another and say, there it is. Uh, But it's interesting to just have one thing. I had the same reaction to the Mandalorian actually. Um, I mean, I, I wasn't, I wasn't overly enamored with it. I just didn't like the tone, but like, he's really brave with his sounds. Like you can hear everything he's doing um and it's it's he just he clearly he spent time on on specific sounds for sure yeah i don't know about you guys but personally i've had experiences where i've like made a sound and i'm like it's pretty good we'll just bury it there it's good enough (laughs) but it takes yeah it takes real craftsmanship to have a sound that you can stand behind and say that is exactly what it is and you're hearing only that this is this is also what i meant when i was talking about simplicity there's like He's playing with few elements and 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 uh, just be being so bold to just put one sound in your face and 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 not burning burying it with a gazillion strings and cellos and other synthesizers. It's just like I, I think that's also part of what makes you feel uneasy. We're not used to hearing this sort of stuff. Uh, yeah. it's, it, and to go back to what Ale was saying, it's out there. Some people have already done that, but we're, we're just not used to to this. And it's interesting to have it in a blockbuster, in what was supposed to be the film that would save cinema in the age of COVID. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, what, what shall we go? Seven four seven. The, yeah, we could do that or or the opening. Oh what yeah. Think? Which one? We which can... one the, the opening or? Seven four seven. I would go for seven four seven between the two, but uh, let's do it. Seven, the seven, only seven. palindrome title. Michael <laughs> Giacchino would be very disappointed. <laughs> no, it's not. I know it's well, okay. I can't, can't say too much. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, we're about five minutes away from having been on for an hour, so why don't I just press play? Let's all yeah. say goodbye now, and when it finishes, we'll end the stream. So, for those watching on YouTube or whatever, thanks for joining us for this discussion, and I guess we'll see you next week. Before we go, though, um, should we just give a plug that next week yes. we would love to, um, we want to do a review of audience work. Um, so we're going to be reviewing some action music um, and we'll be sort of publicizing this through the week, but we'd love to hear from anybody um, who wants to participate. So you can kind of submit your tracks to us during the stream via SoundCloud or Spotify link or whatever you'd like. Um, and then we'll listen through it and give some feedback. Um, so it's something we'd love to incorporate a lot more into the streams. 
and kind of do this fairly regularly uh, where we give a chance to kind of give some direct feedback. And I think to be consistent with what we discussed about this week and with the genre that we're sort of on, I think that next week we were gonna uh, focusing mainly of, on action music, right? Yeah. Yeah, it would be so, yeah. action, action music. Action packed stuff. Cool. Cool. All right, great. Here we go, 747. Cheerio. See you guys next time. Bye. Bye. See you next week. Cheerio.